Hello everyone, welcome to Caroline's Craft Tree. Today, another episode of the CCT 52 Challenge. This is week 30. So there's lots of information in the description box, lots of information on the Facebook group. Links are in the description. So we have newspaper, fabric, watercolor, die cut, and bunched up thread. Remember, if you don't have one of these, you can substitute it for something that you think is close. So let's get started. I've got a strip of fabric. I have three oval die cuts that I already had cut out. I've got some vintage newspaper from 1872. I've got a little pile of bunched up thread. And I've got these watercolor pencils, which that's what I'm going to use for my watercolor. So let's get started. I have not made one. <clears throat> I haven't kind of tested my theory of this one, but we will see. Now we are going to start, I cut this to size and I inked around the edge a little bit. So we're going to start by gluing this down. I'm going to use art glitter glue. I pretty much use art glitter glue all the time for everything and I find that it works pretty good. So this newspaper is a little bit fragile and I did rip it right along there so I'm going to make sure I get that Good, but basically going around the edge and then I'll do the middle part. So one thing when we get these really vintage papers they do oops just put my glue right through the middle of it. Okay should have enough glue on there let's Put this down. I kind of left enough space to leave all around the edge. It's a little bit off there, but that's okay. It seems even everywhere, so I probably cut it wrong. Okay, let's, I want to ink up these things. These were just a die cut I cut out of old um, greeting cards. So they're quite a thick, heavy duty cardstock. Okay, that one's going to be for something else. Now these, I want to Glue these down. It's not really important where they get glued down. Just as long as they're glued down. So we've got that there. Now, what do I want to do? I think I want to get a jiffy marker. Now make sure that it works. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, now I've seen this long, long time ago and I even played around with it. But I'm going to draw a design on here and then I'm going to color it in. So there's no rhyme or reason to how I want to put these in. 
I'm just going to put some marks and then we're going to end up coloring these in. As I say, the marks can be any shape, any size. It, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to do a whole bunch because otherwise it's going to take forever. But I do have to do enough to do my project. As I say, they can be any size, any shape, and I'm just kind of doing some weird little squiggly things. Do one over here. So let's see how we go from there. I'm going to put my pin back in my glue. I've picked out a few different colors. So now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to color in here. And pretty much just fill up what I just drew. Now there's not a lot in there. But I don't want to be coloring for an hour while you guys watch either. So Just going to fast forward while I color this stuff in. Okay, so I've got these all colored in. <clears throat> now I wasn't too worried about getting right to the edge because I'm going to take this water brush. It's one of the ones where you just put water in it. I always use um, distilled water. Just grabbing a tissue here so I can wipe up any little blobs. And that way the water never goes bad. 
So now I'm just going to go over where I put the watercolor and that kind of blends it all together. Now, I don't want to put too much water on here. If I feel like I'm getting too much, I will just kind of wipe it a little bit. And I don't know if you've ever used watercolor crayons before, but they actually work really, really good. I really like how they turn out. And basically, it gets rid of all the lines that you get when you color with pencil crayons. Because this just makes it all blend together nice. Now it's not adding a ton of color. But that's okay because I didn't want a lot of color. Now I am going to be mixing the colors to a point. And that's okay too. can't remember what they actually call this. I seen it probably three years ago, maybe two years ago. Um, I think I seen it on Pinterest, but not 100% sure. It's been so long. But some people do like an actual picture. I've done them too where you get an old book page and you circle words on the book page. I think it's in an old video. Um, can't remember which video, but I think I showed it few years back okay I just got this big pink one to do you can do quite a small space with these you can also too like scribble on a paper and then pick up the color and put it on wherever you want it. Just need a little more water in there. The um, printing on the, the old newspaper does not seem to be running. And if it is, it's not enough to worry about. Just got this little bit to do. It's actually quite easy also to shade doing this because you can just put more ink on where you want it. Okay. So that's all we're doing for that. Now I could get really in there and do like tons of it. So now this is actually going to be going down. So it's nothing fancy, but it's kind of cool and just adds a little bit of color to things. So let's go ahead to the back side. Now this little one is going to go in here. So I'm going to put my thread down in this corner. I 
I like to wipe the glue off of my pin because then that way it just works better when I okay so there's my bunched up thread these were just from a material that I tore to put into strips and then you always got to pull those couple of threads off and I'm going to put quite a bit of glue on that because I want it to go kind of through this thread and that will help hold it down okay I'm just going to hold that for a second because I want it to squash all that thread in there and this is just to kind of blend it in with the other side a bit okay I want to make sure those edges get down there nice and tight okay this is going to go right up on this lip right there. And again, not a hard project. Something a little different. It's going to go into my book behind a paper clip that I made. Okay. So, we got that there, and then on the back here, I'm going to A bow. Now I know there's ways to tie a really good bow. But that's that's okay. I'm gonna leave these long, I think. Cut them up at a bit of an angle. Try getting these going in the right direction. I want them hanging down. So I want to put some glue right along there to put my bow down. and turn this end. There we go. Now I think I want to put a big blob right under the knot of the bow. These are just going to hold down. So the back side of the blow bow is glued down, but not the front, so we still get that good three-dimensional bow. So it's just going to look like so. Now, Did I use the, all the stuff? We've got newspaper, we got fabric, we got our watercolor, we got our tie cuts, and our bunch of thread. 
So there we have that. Let's bring in our book. Now I've got a paper clip right here that I made. I made that for week 13. So my idea is, I don't think I want it on that. I'm gonna switch it to this page. So this is going to go over the page that away. This we're just going to put here. It's going to hold that all together and we're just going to put this in here as well. Let's just line these up a little nicer. So these projects are coming along really, really good. Okay, so there we have week 30 as well as week 13 in here. So then we've got that showing on that side. And then we have this over on this side which also goes with this pink bottle <clears throat> sorry i'm a little hoarse today and i think that's kind of cute you've got lots of journaling room here although you could do something on there as well but i think that looks pretty good hope you enjoyed this week's challenge and we look forward to seeing what you've made. And we'll see you soon in another video. Bye.